welcome back friends to another beautiful day on the homestead. It is Thursday morning. It is a very nice 50 degrees. Spring feels like it's here. I just took a walk down in the orchard and I saw all of the peaches and pear and plum trees. They're all starting to bloom. Uh, it was the first time it must have just happened uh, this morning or maybe it was yesterday. So it's a perfect day to do forestry and I'm very excited to try something new today. And this was something that was suggested by many of you guys in the comments about dealing with the limbs. In the previous video, we we're talking about uh, FireWise, about how to protect our homes and, and how to have healthy forests and, and stewardship. But one of the biggest problems with that, one of the most, the thing that causes the most labor, or takes the most labor, is dealing with those branches. I don't know why I hadn't thought of this myself, but what the suggestion was is, hey, take a, uh, take a, a good piece of rope or cable and lay it down, stack your branches on top of it, and then either use a hook or a Bolin's knot and pick it up with a piece of equipment. That way it'll cinch tight and you can take it wherever you want. So I thought, well, let's try that today. Brian, uh, my hired man, is, is up, uh, he's doing some burning up on the uh, south end of the pasture. So let's uh, do a little limbing here and we'll get a big old pile and we'll try, uh, we'll try the system and see if it does indeed uh, work. So let's take a look at the rigging uh, that I've got here uh, to, to do this. So on the front of the tractor, of course, is the what I typically have used for moving brush around, which is the Frostbite Grappler. This is probably my favorite attachments of all the attachments I own. It's, it's for me the most useful because what I'm primarily doing out here is forestry. So this has just been a, a godsend. So remember this guy? So from yesterday's video, this was the um, that pincher uh, that cable pincher that David sent, and I thought, man, this would be a, the perfect thing for this. So I've got um, uh, shackles. I've got a couple shackles on here. I've had to reduce the size down to fit over the frostbite, the, the tongue there. And what we're going to be using is what my favorite, my new favorite stuff. I've been using this for three, four years now. It's the, I think it's made by Amsteel. Don't be deceived, it's not, it's not rope. It looks like, it, um, I mean, it is rope, but it's much, much more than rope. This is what is being replaced on a lot of winches uh, for the wire cable. It, what's really nice about it is it doesn't uh, fray, so when you're handling it, you don't get uh, cut, and, and it also it doesn't carry inner, any energy when it's under load. So if it does break, it just falls to the ground, unlike a wire cable, which will take your head off. So uh, what I've got here is I've got just a piece, um, a piece of this with a hook weaved on here. And what I'm thinking was gonna be perfect is that we'll just unclip this, we'll lay this on the ground and we'll pile our branches on top of them. We'll come back around when the pile is done and then we can short hook it right here uh, with uh, the, the grappler deal or the little pincher deal that David sent. And that will uh, hook on there like there. And as we lift the bucket, it will pinch. Are you in frame? Can you see that? There we go, that's better. So it will pinch, as you can see there, it's got that little pawl on it, and the heavier the load, the more the pinch, and that will bite, and that will, will hook on there. And then we don't have to worry about tying knots or, um, or any of that stuff. Do you need this to do this method? No, of course not. You could use a bowling knot in, uh, in anything you have, but uh, you're probably going to need a tractor or something that's going to lift. But let's, uh, let's, cut, uh, let's cut our pile and then uh, see how it goes. I've got a pile started here uh, from yesterday. So we'll just keep this this going, and there's not so much there that we can't uh, uh, still use our rope here. So when I this rope, uh, a daisy a daisy chain this that way it doesn't get all tangled up on me, and it has a hook woven into it, so we don't need to tie tie a Bolin's knot. But um, what I'm thinking is we'll probably somewhere towards the middle. Let's see if we can't just weave that through there. We'll lay it flat out here and pile the branches on top of that. Boy, this is such a good idea that it would be, really be something to be able to take the whole pile in one, one grasp um, up to the, where Brian's burning. And we don't have to have piles burn out all, burning all over the place. Okay, let's get to work. So uh, those of you guys wa who watched the, I think it was yesterday, day before yesterday or so, uh, I did a, did a saw review on the Silky versus my favorite, the Itchy Bond. Well, 
a, a lot of a lot of you guys made the point that that wasn't really a fair comparison and, and that silky i mean they make the same type of saw um and that i should have gotten one of those to compare it and i and i would agree with you uh you're you're probably right um interesting thing was silky took issue with that as well they sent me <laughs> sent me an email this morning um and said hey uh you know you you got a few things wrong on that we'd like to clarify they were very polite um, we'd like uh, to um, to send you a cup, couple comparable saws and, and try them out and see what you think. So I haven't responded to the email yet, but I'll I will agree to that, and I'll have them. Um, we'll do another test that's a little bit more apples to apples um, than the last one. Another good point that was mentioned by uh, several commenters and some guys that were arborists about cutting um, cutting off the collar was that they recommended making a, a bottom cut uh, like this. And that what that will do is that severs the bark and prevents the bark from tearing down the tree. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. It's not really required. It, I mean, it's kind of, a, it's, an, it's an unhandy and unnatural thing to do when you're doing, when you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of limbs all day. And on the fir trees, the conifers, it's just not necessary. The bark isn't like that. I could see maybe on a cherry tree or different species that that would be really important. So if you do, if you are living in your forest and you're noticing when you're cutting the bottom that it's tearing off the trunk, I just make a little cut on the backside there and that will uh, certainly sort that out. Here's a perfect example of what we were talking about the other day about uh, ladder fuels. If you look and see here, this uh, ponderosa branch has grown down into the, the needles, which are, these will, will just light up uh, uh, real easily in the summertime. It's grown down into the needles and into the ground. So any fire that comes on here is just gonna go right up that, uh, right up that. Look at all of the, the needle and the understory there on top of that branch. The whole thing was all under, underneath. One of the reasons I enjoy this uh, forestry work so much is the instant gratification that you get that you can see, you can see what your labors have produced. You, uh, Interesting story. I was uh, I was at the Mother Earth News Fair. I had the um, I, I met Joe Salatin years ago, and him and I I wouldn't say we're friends, but we've become acquaintances because we were both keynote speaking at different events. And um, he was talking about a guy. Uh, he, he's got Polyface Farms. If you don't know him, Joe Salatin is the rock star of the permaculture movement. Uh, he's written a lot of books. If you if you want a good you want a treat, read get some of his books. He's an he's an excellent writer. Uh, and quite a, uh, quite an interesting guy, very, very smart. Uh, and we were talking about um, the difficulty of finding good help and, you know, complaining, of course, about the younger generation as, as all old people do, seem to do. Uh, and he had, uh, he told, shared the story with me about, uh, he's got interns that come to his place and they learn how to do permaculture. And he had a guy that was a really smart guy. I think he was a coder. He was a computer guy um, and really good at what he did, but he got really frustrated with the work because he and his team would spend months and months uh, creating something, a bit of a bit of code, a cog in a wheel for uh, for a bigger project, and they would they would pour their hearts and souls into this, and it was it was beautifully done. Uh, and they would send push it with a click of a button on a keyboard, they would send it off, um, and off it went to the home office, and uh, and and that was it. There was nothing to they couldn't really see anything. It was nothing to 
to, to show their, their kids. For example, you couldn't say, come home and, and to your son or your daughter and say, well, look what Papa built today. You know, Papa built a house or, or, or Papa did this or he cleared the forest. Um, it was hard to explain. And, and that's really important, I think, for us, especially as men, is if we want to impress our women. We want to, uh, to receive, a, we, we want to, them to know that we're, what we've done and, and we're proud of what we created when there's no physical I guess um, manifestation of that, it's, uh, it's difficult. Fast forward anyway, he quit that job and came to work. He got a job as an intern. And he said, they were, the, for one of the first days they were working, they were, they were building fence, miles and miles of fence. He said, at the end, Joe said, at the end of the day, this guy um, was, became very emotional uh, and, and just broke down and, and, and started crying. And uh, Joe asked him, hey, well, you know, what's going on? You all right? And the guy related this story. You know, my whole life I've spent uh, doing a job um, that uh, I've never really seen the outcome of. This is the first time I've actually built something, that I've created something, and I can look back at the end of the day and, and look and see that I, I built a mile of fence today. And, I, and I'll never forget that. You know, it's really important. We're, we're not all in a position to be able to do that sort of thing, but um, if you are a computer programmer or, you know, and, and you don't have that joy, then you know, you can, you can volunteer, you can do lots of different things. I, I was just thinking how many widows around here and, and old folks that are getting old who, whose properties need to be taken care of and looked after, um, and how many folks would enjoy and benefit from being out in nature and doing that. It would be, be something if we could put together people who are willing to do that with people who have a need. And um, I thought that was kind of interesting, but, but that's the point of this is that at the end of the day, you can look and, and really see you see what you accomplished and share with your loved ones, and uh, it's, a, it's really a, a wonderful thing. So I've been getting a few complaints that these videos are running a little bit too long, that I should um, I'll make them uh, a little briefer, a little more concise. So I think what I'm going to do is, since we're going to be kind of, we'll just turn it into a bit of a, 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 an ongoing or running forestry series. Uh, we'll keep it at uh, between 10 and 15 minutes or so, and then we'll pick up uh, and finish up um, next time. So... Uh, Talking about uh, helping helping your neighbors and uh, looking for opportunities, you know, as I spoke to in this video, I, I met a guy years ago who uh, who had really come up with what I would consider, and he considered as well, a, an interesting ministry, and it was his firewood ministry. And he would um, go cut firewood, and he, he enjoyed doing it. Uh, he was retired and didn't have a lot of things to do, and so he would go and load up his truck, and he would deliver this firewood to, um, um, to widows or shut-ins or, or folks that he uh, would make contact with at local churches. He might reach out to the pastor and say, hey, do you know anyone that uh, maybe could use some firewood or would be blessed by this? And, and he really enjoyed that, and I thought that that was one of the most wonderful things. I think... Or it seems to me, anyway, um, a doer of the word is better than a talker of the word. <laughs> and, and all of those folks that think that they're doing good uh, by uh, Bible thumping or preaching to folks, um, I think you'd be better better served to go and, uh, and and help your neighbor change his oil, or to go go deliver a widow a load of wood. Um, it just seems to me, it just seems to be uh, a lot more practical a lot more practical all right well thanks for watching we'll pick up in uh, the next with the next episode uh, tomorrow and I uh, appreciate it. if you enjoy these videos please click the thumbs up and uh, always leave a comment and we'll see you guys on the next video